Hi, and welcome to Get a Job, Tips and Secrets for the Academic Job Market. I am Lee Hall. If you have a question that you would like to see addressed in one of these upcoming videos, please email me, leahall39 at gmail.com. And also check out my blog, leahall.wordpress.com, where I discuss issues, in, uh, issues about teaching in higher education. All right, so let's talk about the job talk. Now, what is a job talk? A job talk, and this won't necessarily apply to everyone. It will depend on what kind of an institution you are interviewing at. But a lot of institutions do require that you give a talk about your research, all right? So for a doctoral student, this is going to involve standing up and talking about your dissertation, at least as much as it is possible to, and telling us a little bit about where you are headed, where you see yourself headed in the future. Job talks are very important. They showcase um, who you are as a researcher, right? What, and who you hope to evolve into as a researcher. They give us insight into your work. They give us insight into your abilities to conduct research. So they are critical in terms of spending a lot of time on it, right? You want to spend time. You want to make it look good. I'm going to give you today some general tips that you can utilize that will help um, make your job talk go a lot more smoothly. So some basic tips. First, and I put this first, I think, because it is like it is my number one pet peeve. It is the one thing that I see people, and I don't just mean um, beginners. I mean people at all levels uh, mess up. Stay in the allotted time frame. So before you get out for the interview, the search chair should be in touch with you to tell you how long you have for a job talk. Typical time is about 60 minutes. And what I tell people, and if you're not given this information, you should ask. What I tell people is, You've got 60 minutes for your job talk, right? It's on the schedule, let's say from one to two. But you have to leave time for questions. So I tell people, keep it in the 40 to 50 minute range. And that gives us anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to talk um, with you, ask you questions. So if you have directions like this, then that's what you wanna hit. You wanna provide a talk that is within the 40 to 50 minute time range. If you finish your talk in 20 minutes, you do not get bonus points. That doesn't look good, right? It looks, you look underprepared. Same thing if you finish in 30 minutes, right? You just, it just doesn't look good. You don't want to finish too quickly. But you also don't want to take up the whole hour if I told you that you've got up to 50 minutes, right? 40 to 50 minutes. Because then we don't have time to ask you questions. And while it can be scary to have to um, answer questions about your research, and I will be the first to say, not everyone in the audience behaves appropriately, right? Some people are just, they just, they're just rude and they ask rude questions. Um, it, you still have to do it, okay? And if you run all the way out of up to, you know, the last minute and don't give question, time for questions, that doesn't really look good. It doesn't reflect well on you because people cannot necessarily stay to continue talking to you after the hour is up, right? People have to teach class or there are doctoral students in there that have to go to class or there are meetings, right? There's other things going on. So when the time is up, the time is up. People can't necessarily hang around. Now, keeping in mind that your job talk is really important, you wanna practice it before you come to campus. Practice it by yourself. Practice it with your advisor if you can. Practice it with other with friends, other academic friends. Get feedback on it. Practice it, get comfortable with it. Um, as much as possible, practice it in front of other people, okay? It's fine to have notes when you are giving your talk. It's fine to take notes up there. In fact, I would recommend that you script out your talk and practice from that. Um, and you can take that script up with you. Of course, you don't want to have your head buried in it, reading from it, right? You want to know your talk well enough that you just need to look down at it. Um, it's there. As, those notes are there as a reference. You're able to make eye contact and engage with the audience. Now, that being said, I absolutely do not recommend that you go up with no notes. And I say this because if you get nervous, it's easy to stumble and then all of a sudden not know where you are or leave out important information or skip over something. So the notes give you, you know, give you a frame of reference, something to, to look at and help keep you grounded and solid. I suggest that you have a focus for your talk. And if possible, to try to frame it out as a story. Now, I don't mean fictional story. Um, and there's obviously, there are entire books written on how to give a good talk, okay? And I recommend that you, you know, go look for some of those, check those out. Um, when I talk about framing it out as a story, there's a great book, and I'll put it in the notes section, about how to give TED Talks. And it doesn't always apply in every situation, but in something like this, it could, because you have enough time 
um, to really utilize it. it. It'll help you see different formats and think about different ways of structuring your talk that are more likely to resonate and connect and have staying power with an audience. Because you want your talk to be memorable. You want it to be memorable for the right reasons, right? You want people to remember you in a positive light. And so spending time learning about how to give a good talk is something that will pay off for you. Having said that, um, and ha well, having acknowledged that there's lots of books out there about how to give a good talk, I will give you one tip, which is don't overwhelm your audience with information, right? Don't hit your audience with slides that just are jam-packed with information so that everybody's trying to read your slide and they're not listening to you, right? You want your slides to be kept at a minimal, right? You just want the information up there, the bare necessities, because you can talk and embellish, um, add to the points that are up there, just like I'm doing now. Now, when you get to the Q&A session, attempt to answer every question being asked. All right, I don't care how crazy the question is. And let me tell you, if you get asked a crazy, inappropriate, rude, wacky question, and, and it happens, um, you should probably count on the fact that everyone in the audience also knows that's a crazy, wacky, rude, inappropriate question that you just got asked, okay? Um, so the best thing that you can do is just be polite. Be polite to everybody, acknowledge the question. If you can't answer it, um, because sometimes people will ask you questions that you just don't have the answer to, or they'll ask you, hey, did you consider doing, you know, interviewing 10 people instead of 20 people for your dissertation? You might say, no, I didn't, but, and even if you see absolutely no value in it, you can still say, I did not do that, but I can understand your point. I can see why, you know, this could be a valuable thing to consider. Like, if you can't answer the question for whatever reason, if somebody asks you, um, have you thought about doing this instead of that, and you haven't, just say, you know what, I didn't think of that. I didn't consider it. But I will. Thank you so much for the, for the suggestion, okay? But as much as possible, answer every question being asked. Be nice to everybody. Smile. Enjoy. And, and that will leave a good impression on people, okay? So I know this sounds like a lot. I know it's a nerve-wracking time. I think most people, if you're new, right, especially if you're a doctoral student and you're on the job market, I think most people are sympathetic to the fact that it's a stressful time and you don't have a lot of experience with this sort of thing. And we assume that you're going to be anxious and nervous. That being said, at the same time, we still expect you to be prepared. We still expect to see evidence that, you know, that you practiced your talk. You have a handle on what you're doing. You know how to handle and field questions. So these are just some tips for you to think about as you go forward in preparing your job talk.